do picks and bands. And the dunk master Darius is yeah. dunked into the bands. Not really the, a big surprise. Fiora and Darius, as you just mentioned, are being hyped up quite a lot as well. And we have to remind people, this is the blue side ban for Fnatic, so they might still be able to first with one of these three picks we just mentioned before. Yeah, the Lulu ban makes a lot of sense. Fnatic had a ton of success, as did everyone running that as a flex pick between the mid and the top lane. And that can be a very interesting thing when it comes to red side, blue side now, because red side used to be where you could like target ban a little bit more because you wanted multiple OPs to be open so you can get two of them on your side. In this case, if there's only three that every team agrees on, you have to ban away at least one of them, and then you can trade the last one. They go for all three, it looks like. Mordekaiser ban, first of its kind that we will see. Gangplank is still up, gentlemen. There are two bans remaining. I wonder if these teams will be looking towards that, as is Callista. We've not touched on some of the yeah. anti-carry rolls yet either. Really, Vayne is actually banned before Callista. Callista has received some nerfs throughout patches now. One of the lowest win rate you have in solo queue, but still tremendous competitive capability. It has actually been left up with Gangplank going down. I wonder what Huni will end up playing and how much priority is on the first pick. Really not that much, it seems. But this was exactly what we just mentioned before with the red side. If there's only three super, super strong picks, you have to ban them away from IG's side, and they're just playing it safe. Not gonna take any chances here. We've seen Rekta spam a lot of Mordecai in solo queue. At least, I'm not surprised. I think she's the best jungler open or just available, basically, because Italy. a lot of them are very even, but at least just for me stands out just a little bit. Her early game is still great, and the fact she has that cocoon. Yeah, so Nidalee, I wonder if Cow's going to play this for a second. I thought they'd actually locked in Aatrox. Is about to freak out. <laughs> it's not a European team. Yeah. Bra Brom has been banned, so the poke from Nidalee would be higher, but Kakao actually goes for Skarner as he did during their final regional qualifier match against QG. So, ladies and gentlemen, three out of the four juggernauts have already appeared in game one of Worlds. There's five seconds left for the lock-in. IG most likely going to go for the safe support pick, and it is the Thresh secured. And you get one of these conversations now where your single target CC is so insane already in the first two picks. Stun from Skana, then you pull them in with your ulti, the threshold coming in as well. The amount of pick potential you have on just two picks, and also still very safe. Skana's gonna do fine dueling in that early game. He doesn't gank that well before level six. I definitely wanna see how Kitties performs. Out of the 67 games in summer, only three of them were on Thresh. For Fnatic, they now know what they're facing in the jungle. They now know what their support is, but solo lanes still left available for both teams. And with both Lulu and Gangplank being banned away, that's two of the most standard flex picks we're going to see. On blue side now, you might have to blind pick both your solo laners, which can be a big, big problem for Fnatic. And it would open up potentially for some interesting counter picks from IG. Yeah, well, what's interesting here is that Shen could technically be flexed. It's been a long time since we've seen Shen support, but it could absolutely fit in this context. Or Huni can play it as a neutralizing tank in the top lane. But as far as what we know of Huni's champion pool, he really doesn't have that much success on neutralizing tanks like Maokai. So that's a very interesting pick of Shen this early from Fnatic. But it is one of these flex picks here for Fnatic. So potentially they can hide one of their solo laners, but I'm expecting to go to Yellowstar for the exact reason you just mentioned. And also this Shen would then open up another way for Huni to dual Zitai. And with Rain over John, Kakao John, we're gonna have so many fights on that top side of the map. Shin support will fit in super well there. And a lot of opportunity left for IG. I like how long these teams are taking in the pick and ban phase. There are so many different things to be prepared for that they have to switch it up. And we already <laughs> get yeah. to see Riven. Zatai, hello. Rookie could also take it to the mid lane. He could. For IG. But again, you have this conversation with Ash even more single target pick potential. And then you add in a burst bruiser in Riven, even an assassin we can call and it. Skarner. And Skarner again to jump on that one target and simply just burst him down. Fnatic, they're gonna look to get a QSS. Not as the first item, but they probably wish they could. <laughs> well, Invictus Gaming already with some surprises. And for Fnatic, I'm not seeing a lot of damage yet. They do have 20 seconds. They will be showing both of their solo lanes. And as we mentioned, that Riven could technically flex. If you were in Fnatic's shoes, I, how do you round this combat? I'd expect a victor of some kind. 
in here. Azir, Victor, just a reliable damage mage. We were wondering whether Febivan would be switching over to an assassin playstyle or if he'd stick with the more defensive mages. And it is Azir, not necessarily defensive mage, but a uh, high damage control mage. Yeah, and I think Azir is a little bit safer as a blind pick compared to Victor now that his early game has been nerfed a little bit. You can get onto him and you can duel him very effective. Azir can just, from basically level one or level two, just start pushing his waves. And if he's in a bad matchup, you just push out your lane and you don't look to fight the guy and you farm up to late. So I like that as the, as the blind safe pick for Fnatic, but really being on blue side has been an issue for them because they have to show so many things. Exactly. And with the nerfs to Azir and lower movement speed, as well as the potential rise of Assassins, we were wondering how dangerous it would be to pick Azir early, even though Azir can push up the lane here. But Rookie also played Victor in his last three competitive games and crushed with it. So it would not be very surprising if he picks Azir. Yeah, that was a funny thing about this 516 regionals we saw in LPL, where Victor just got a nerf, the CS just got nerfed, and yet it was Victor who became one of the most impactful champions in the tournament itself. It's still super strong. Early game, yes, is affected. But when it comes to the late game scaling, it is even better than before. Final champion locked in. There we go, Victor. Once you eventually get to level 18 in outscales, I'm going to be very interested to see how Skarna and Riven will perform. Team Great. compositions are now rounded out. Jet. Not only do we get to see Riven, we get to see Huni come back onto Hecram again, something he hasn't touched in a really long time. Support Shen. It's really just a throwback competition for Fnatic. It's like we're on the 512 patch again <laughs> with the champions they're playing. I'm just looking at Fnatic here saying, we know you're going to play around that top side of the map with the Riven. We have Shen support, at least strong early game jungler. We have an offensive summoner spell on our top laner. We are ready to take that fight. Whoever wins it might just run away with the game. Uh, both of these teams want to do just that. Two of the most talked about top laners in the World Championships. You can see the coaches on screen, Daylor and Mafa, giving them teams the last little bit of information as we load up onto the Rift. We are, of course, here in Le Doc Pullman in Paris, France. The audience is cheering on their teams, as are everybody watching at home. I mean, the first pick in Van Phase. I love it. We weren't Absolutely exactly Maud, sure what to Maud, expect. Maud, Lulu, and GP, gone. I'm hey. actually a little bit surprised because of how dated feeling Fnatic's champions look like. No one was expecting really Hecarim to be a large pick, or Sivir, or Support Shen, and they have all of them. Well, you did see the team comps on your screens. Guys, jump onto Twitter and vote for who you feel will be victorious and get that first W on the board. Hashtag FNC win or hashtag IG win. Make sure you guys uh, keep your eyes open. Be on the lookout for any painter kills or any Baron steals, because that is going to unlock a little bit of an extra chance to get a legendary or esports inspired skin. Guys, we do have a very brief pause, and I want to mention this Hecarim point you touched on, Jet. 21 games since Huni has last played that champion. Okay. Admittedly, yeah. it's been what, two and so a half weeks? Yeah, three very, weeks the very beginning of the summer split. Correct. Been the last However, 24 games total. So. Hecarim was a pick when he was used a lot. They always did really well into melee matchups because you can constantly just sit and spam your Q. Yeah. And again, when you don't run with the smite, as we saw for a period of time here with Cinder Hulk, you have an offensive summoner. You're going to rush the Trinity Force. You are very, very strong in the mid game. And when we have the these all-in comps on the top side of the map with the Riven jumping in, with the Skana going in and trying to pull someone back. Fnatic are going to be ready to fight for it. So I wonder if IG is going to say, you know what, we're not going to fall for that one. We're going to try and play around to Shin instead and have this massive amount of teleport and action in the bottom side where the Thresh and, and Ash are there to provide the CC. Yeah, and as far as the early game strengths of these teams go, I do have to point out, Kakao has only played Skarner two times. He picked it up after they actually lost to EDG when Clearlove played Skarner against them and then he played it twice. In those games, he completed a sight stone right after he upgraded the first part of his Hunter's Machete. So incredibly early on in the game, that would be really a sight stone rush on Skarner, who already needs to farm until six. So he's actually playing a very weak early game Skarner style that is pretty much all about defensive wards. That actually gives Fnatic 
a potential window to aggress on the top side because Kakao's counter ganks are not that strong to support a Riven who needs a lot of jungle attention. You're 100% going to see Reyna will be more active when it comes to ganking in the early game than a pre-level 6 Skarner. Skarner, on the other hand, he often benefits a lot from having lanes that can push, so he can invade into the enemy jungle, contest, of course, a little bit in there. He's dueling pretty well. It's just running to a target pre-level 6 is not very effective. You have to land your E then to connect the stun as well, and that's very difficult for him. So we might see Rainover be very active. We've seen it before, Trevor, in Europe, how Rainover is constantly around Huni in that top lane and try and snowball him, because then eventually Huni would TP to the bottom side, and every single lane is then rolling for Fnatic. It's pretty much Fnatic style. Guys, I do have an update from production. The players are having a little bit of glare on the screens from the stage lights, so while our technicians are tweaking with those settings, we will just keep chatting a little bit more about the matchup. And for Yellowstar to play Shen, it is a champion he's also only played twice. Something that Fnatic were in fact punished with when playing against the likes of Origin and H2K. Because Fnatic played so much around their top lane, then all of a sudden their opponent Shen would TP up and Huni would go, oh bugger. Uh, this time around, <laughs> they're now trying to channel some of that power themselves, knowing of course that Kakao wants to hold Rookie or Zitai's hand. Yeah, and with Rookie playing Victor, I'm not expecting all the action to be around the middle, middle no. lane. This is gonna be more the farm lane, just try and push each other out, see who can roam first. Often, as Zia, when he gets the Nashus, he can really push the lane, but then Victor goes back with his E and just in instant plays Yeah, And only in general, it's a question of what style we're going to see this game. Fnatic actually adopted a somewhat defensive or passive play style in the first 15 to 20 minutes of games over in the European LCS because they were so dominant. They didn't need to take large amounts of risks in the early game, so therefore they started playing more passive. But we'd expect in the month leading up to Worlds playing against higher and higher caliber teams that they would have adopted some more aggression. And we're kind of seeing that reflected in their early picks here. The Hecarim and the Elise are two champions that look for very early plays. Yeah, and once again, Fnatic, when it comes to preparation, we know how much work they put into it. So again, they've been watching all these games here from IG, looking at how they play. And I think we can safely say that over three, four weeks of boot camping, if Fnatic was still extremely weak in the early game and kept getting punished and losing games for it, they would have changed something. So if they stick to the style we've seen in Europe, it's because they've still been able to play well in late game team fights. The same thing I want to say for IG though, because as a team, while they are so inconsistent and we often talk so much about the early game, Kakao, Zitai and, and Rookie, when it comes to late game team fights, I think they are a very strong team. They are in the LPL, fantastic practice, of course, and Kid is a fairly underrated AD carry when it comes to these team fights. I don't think he's ever going to do a whole lot in the laning phase because of Kitty's as well, has kind of hold his hand in the lane. But then in team fights, Kid often plays some of these characters like Vayne and can't go crazy. Well, one game wasn't particularly great, but okay, that's, that's, fair. So that's fair. story. Uh, Huni on the Hecarim will be setting his target on Kid. I mean, Ash, low mobility. If Huni comes in with those TP home guard rushes, that could be a little bit uh, of a problem for him. Um, assuming Fnatic gets to a good mid-game position. For Fnatic coming up against IG, their team fighting, you've talked about it. How much will this team composition affect their ability to fight? I absolutely love Fnatic's composition and team fights. Right here, you have fantastic engage on the back line, as you mentioned with the Ash here, low mobility coming in. At the same time, if you look at what IG is running, when you have a Riven, you're never going to look to engage this head on. You want to flank with the Riven at first. So whoever gets that vision control before objectives can be super impactful for well, both Hecarim and Riven getting into fights. There's also a few different ways ID can initiate. Obviously the Ash Arrow is That's the main a one. really large part of their initiation. And that allows them to really single out one individual and will basically make it so if the Ash Arrow connects and Kakao goes in, Reckless is required to use his Sivir ultimate just to match the fight because they'll basically have to run in after whoever is getting pulled in. And I'm actually kind of happy we had the delay here because we did so much prep. We finally got a chance to talk about some of this stuff. We're back in the game. Yes, we are, Jat. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get back onto the rift for well, game one of the group stages in Le Doc Pullman. The Summoner's Cup is etched into the mid lane to remind each and every player what they are competing for and a defensive start across the board. Febuan was the first man in the middle lane. That means he gets the trophy for himself. For now, at least, IG gonna look to take it away from him already. Very defensive start. We see Kid sitting under his tower. This is in case Fnatic invades in on the top side of the map and start deep warding. 
to spot where they're going, they won't see him when he's hiding out unless they just check all the way over the wall. There are so many different lane swap scenarios, and in all of the LPL games we watched, it felt like the LPL games were the hardest to predict out of all of them. So here, it's Kid alone hiding behind one turret, which would be an indicator that they want to hide Kid up in that lane so that they can't scout where the AD carry is, but it also means that IG doesn't necessarily care if there's a lane swap or not. They're mainly just trying to deny knowledge. And we see right here, none of the teams really invaded in and put down multiple wards. Just the ward here on the red buff of IG from Fnatic. Trying to see if they can spot Kakao starting on the top side of the map or on the bottom side. And obviously, if you don't see him on this red buff within the next 30, 40 seconds, you know he started on the bottom side. And that's always good information to get. I want to see if IG wants to freeze this top lane because they are a region, or LPL is a region, where they very often focus on the AD carry experience in these lane swaps. And you can see Kid already up in this top side here, just grouping the minions together and gonna start a freeze for himself. Well, let's find out how that freeze pays out. Reckless down in the bottom lane. Dallas is going to find something here. Just a little bit late on this invade. This was mainly an invade to check who was starting. He can now ping out Huni that he did a solo start, which actually tells the rest of the team a lot. Nice steal there by Yellow. <laughs> but this is one of these uh, situations where if you do not invade in at level one to try and take over a jungle, it's very hard for you to deny anything in the early game. So Huni got his camp, got to back down to the bottom side, and Reckless should be pushing this bottom lane if I know the finale lane swap correct and that means they're just gonna look to take over the bottom side of the map but Fnatic at the same time they didn't invade either so we saw IG clear away this jungle Raynova and Huni can only get a grump for themselves everything else is cleared you can see them holding hands in the bottom half of the jungle Raynova and Huni that is tower is gonna be under threat shortly as Reckless continues to shove the wave up and every time we look middle Febivin's trying to poke out Rookie yeah this is actually where the lane swap will be made or broken Kid is freezing in the top lane, whereas the bottom lane for Fnatic is shoving. And Hecarim and Elise are trying to cut off the Thresh and Riven. IG can't do this. This is way too late. They're sending people down. When there's a fast push happening, IG was slow you on this know well. there's going to be four people on the bottom side. They showed themselves so late that Fnatic can move in between Tier 1 and Tier 2 on the bottom side and zone them away, meaning Riven got absolutely nothing. And now they're late yep. to pushing the top tower as well it can effectively turn into an untradeable turret because the rate at which Fnatic got to push that lane and how they can actually bounce that wave off the turret for Huni to farm means they would be able to rush top before that turret falls. Oh. This is very much now IG needing to take advantage of Kid's experience advantage that he will have because they will be down in the global gold race. Yeah, IG won't even be able to touch the top lane tower here. Kid is looking to just maybe shove the wave out and then go back Ooh. and buy for himself because he has nothing yet. But then tower didn't go didn't down. Bounce mistake properly. Fnatic recall a little yeah. bit too early, just got a little bit too eager in getting this lead here. Yeah, that was actually a pretty big mistake there. Huni, if he would have gotten a little bit more damage from one of his allies before they peeled back to the jungle, they could have bounced the previous wave, which would have preempted the Zatai teleport. Now, Fnatic will have to add an extra person to that bottom lane if they want to take the turret. That, was, that sliver of health on the turret makes a big difference in the early game. The whole strategy from Fnatic was to early take that tower and bounce the wave back so he would freeze and push away from Sitai. He would get less farm. He does have to overextend still because he's pushing down towards Huni. That's why Rainover is showing himself on the bottom side. And Kit just recalled from top lane. He didn't have enough gold for a pickaxe, so no advantage for Kit yet. Yeah, not only is Rainover showing bottom lane, he's already used a pink ward there to give some more help to Zetai. Down in the bottom lane, Zetai's going in. He's going to use those broken wings, get some damage onto Huni, and Huni's forced to rampage away. Easy victory in the trade for Riven. It's suddenly a problem right here for Fnatic. Because the turret was not killed, Zetai actually got to use some of his advantage. All that time investment the Fnatic put into hitting that turret, IG was using to garner experience for the majority of their team. Hecarim needs to be able to win the melee versus melee duel there, and Zetai could end up getting a lot of farm in this game. Now, it's not all bad for Fnatic because they got the big wave coming down to Huni. They're even in AD carry experience or maybe a small, small advantage for Kit, but not enough to make a difference. Even see Reckless hitting five, seeing as he has the big wave coming down for Kit. Yeah. So for now, it is not all bad for Fnatic, but they just lost a chance to get a big advantage. Yeah, and what's interesting here actually is that Reckless has a superior CS score to Kit, despite Kit being left alone in that top lane during all of the early game action. Fnatic actually able to push that in with Sivir, so it is somewhat a tradable lane. 
and I quite like Sivir into Ash because you can constantly push the wave here, make it fairly difficult for IG then to coordinate a proper gank, and you have the spell shield. So what Ash would normally do is she's gonna sit fairly passive in the start of the laning phase, hit level six, arrow someone in the face, and a TP comes in, and you have a massive fight already started. Spell shield from Rexus is gonna stop that. Torn from Yellow Star to dodge out of the arrow makes it very difficult for Kid to set it up. And now he's just gonna get pushed down to his tower over and over. Well, take a look at the um, the uh, trinkets already. Feather been swapped over to that sweeping trinket for fairly early on for the mid lane, and we do see Kakao hovering in this bottom yep. lane. Huni's gonna. Come out slightly ahead in that trade, as he did know Reyna was right behind the back. Well, also a very early sight stone from Kakao once again. So he's going for some pretty strong river ward control. I don't necessarily expect Kakao to get in-person deep wards. Uh, and an interesting choice there. Huni had a big wave, but Kakao actually, get, sorry, Zatai allowed it to kill the turret. And he might look to freeze this. That's a somewhat dangerous lane unless he gets more support. I do like the call though from Zitai just backing away because he knows if Rainover is on the bottom side of the map, that's a 2v2. IG is not going to win with a level 4 Sidestone Scarner. So he backs away, he plays it safe. He knows the tower is too low anyway. And now we're just gonna have to see how Frank push up. I like the move again from Rainover. He's staying on the bottom side, and because Huni's pushing up, he can invade him. Yeah, so this is the early mid-game power of the Elise and the Hecarim kicking in. We go all the way five or six minutes back to the beginning of this lane swap. This is what we thought was going to happen for Fnatic when IG was slow to react to the bottom lane turret push. It took a while to formulate here, but this is that early goal lead that we're expecting from Fnatic about three minutes early. Yeah, and Fnatic just keep playing around the bottom side. You're gonna have Shen, who can join in very soon. He's still level five, but about to hit level six, and then you even have a numbers advantage. And as I highlighted earlier here, IG's bottom lane, it's very difficult for them to set up any place, so they're just gonna have to farm on the tower and wait for Skarna's level six. We are getting closer and closer for Kakao. Kid as well as Reckless hit their respective ultimates, but with Kid having that early boots, he's 500 gold behind Reckless. So Reckless is going up for that BF sword. Is in fact starting to back Yellow Star. No stand United completed just yet. And Fnatic got to push the bot lane wave close to the tower. So now it starts pushing back. One of the minions will die to the tower itself. And Zitai is going to build up a pretty large wave that Huni has to make sure he gets because you cannot afford to fall behind in this matchup. Even see Huni. Early frozen heart he's aiming towards because he knows the all-in from Riven is what he needs to respect. Yeah. That one little longsword got lost somewhere along the way, but he's uh, you know. definitely looking like he's doing a frozen heart <laughs> rush with a tiny little bit of offense. Early. Well, not losing that or not securing the tower early on may have changed the decision making. Yeah. As far as Huni is concerned, he has once again gone to that bottom lane to Fisher looking to catch that wave. And we catch a glimpse back in this middle lane. Feb and Aruku, we've not seen them trading too often, but even on CS. Yeah. Rookie's gone for a second upgrade on that Hextech while Febben's about to back and spend. A lot of the jungle pressure has been about creating space for Huni in this bottom lane with the deep wards from Rainover inside the jungle of IG. So it's kind of expected that the Azir and the Victor would just be trading farm in the mid lane. Keep in mind, this is the nerfed Victor from generally the last time we saw him in most competitive play, aside from the regional qualifiers they're trying to put on 5.16. So he's not getting as much early mana from that tier two upgrade on Victor and will have to be a little bit more conservative with the way he shoves it. And exactly that is a is a fairly big key in this matchup because Azir with Nash's first can just keep shoving the wave without using a whole lot of mana himself. You can try and stop the, the Victor simply because if he goes back to base at the wrong time, Azir is so effective as well at pushing down the tower and that's how Fnatic can keep trying to snowball this tower advantage they already built up with the first one and in fact none of that towers took any damage. Yellow Star's in trouble, he's already taunted and needs to flash over the wall. Zetai's hungry for blood, he's come forward as well. Use those broken wings over. Three members of IG are nearby. Caught a glimpse of Rainover and Jens. He's actually gone Rune Glaive Elise. That's a little different for Fnatic, and Rainover is traditionally one of their primary yeah. tanks. It's something Rainover did in the first game he played Elise against Origin in the finals. It's a squishier build, but this time they actually have a tank in the top lane, so I can see him more getting away with it. The longer Fnatic can hold these lanes, the better. That entire invade by Yellowstar, while it did burn his flash, 
gave Huni a large amount of free time in the bottom lane, whereas Zatai has not been able to farm. So that farm discrepancy amongst top laners is only going to grow as long as these lanes maintain their current form. And obviously, Zatai here is saying, I can't do anything on the bottom side of the map. The wave is going to be at his tower. I'm going to try and make a play. But Kid and Kitties are not ready to give up this top lane to him and try and swap the lanes around because Fnatic can fast push him so effectively. So he's just going to return to the bottom side. We're going to have exactly the same situation. Skana is level 6 though, even level 7 for Kakao. So now the gains can start happening and oh, he's going Whoa. in on Rookie! Oh, Rookie's going to flash the cocoon! Summon a spell blown at the cost of Raynova's flash. Yeah, even so, Rookie still has cleanse even if the cocoon would have landed. The shuffle that Feverben pulled from the mid lane there wasn't quite as clean as he would have liked, but they still do burn one summer spell. I would like to see Fnatic, though, start using this Shen. Make some plays with Huni. He's fairly strong already. He has some armor if he wants to tower dive. And whenever Riven is stuck on a tower here, you can set up a 3v1. You just need to know where Skana is on the map. Yeah, and the main thing Fnatic's doing with the Shen ultimate right now is just pushing up the mid lane with the Stand United in their back pocket. They are waiting for Kakao to become relevant. Even though he is level 6, he still has an upgraded uh, Cinder Hulk, whereas Raynor has been sitting on his jungle upgrade for quite some time. This entire sector of the map, where because of the positioning of the mid and top laner we expected IG to be strong on, has actually been heavily controlled by Fnatic through champion select, through lane swapping, and through their play. Exactly. And that allows them to get the first dragon, extending the gold lead to 1,600. All of that free time for Huni is just money in the bank. And we did continue to see Febivan pushing down that mid outer turret. It's been chunked lower and lower every time Rookie backs. And things are not looking to get much better for IG right now because Kid has been forced to go back at some very poor timings for himself. He had got a pickaxe and then a bit of crit the last time again. There's no BF sword for him. He's not hitting really a point where he's going to be very strong compared to Reckless who's building just to fast push waves with early attack speed. Huni's going to continue doing the same. Frozen Heart is completed. They're basically waiting for Kakao to pull the trick in one of the lanes. But it's going to be very difficult for him because he doesn't know where Raynova is on the lease and he doesn't know if the Shen ulti can just come down instantly and stop this gank from happening. Well, we did see the IG ward near the Grump of Fnatic spotting out Raynova's at least for the time being. A little bit of information to work with and look at the bottom lane. Zetai pushing up the tower heavily, but Raynova's focus is on the top half of the map. Yeah, and Zetai is actually taking some pretty heavy risks right now to be pushed up this far because that quadrant of the jungle that Huni has behind him is completely empty as far as IG is concerned. They're looking to make a risky play because IG has kind of lost control of a lot of this. The vision war is being won by Fnatic and therefore they're moving down blind essentially to where they want to go. Fnatic top lane. ripped in the other side. He has on the hunt down the cocoon. Kitties is caught and he's killed by Rainover. First blood to the Europeans. Fnatic. Fnatic had the pressure on the top side of the map. They push in the tower and IG once again returned from base to that top side with Kid and Kitties, and there was nothing they could do. Fnatic has the map control, and then you can go for these plays. Not only was it a good play, it was a smart play by Fnatic right there. The play that IG was hoping to set up was essentially the same. They were hoping a three or four man dive onto the near empty lane, but they didn't have the vision control, Fnatic did. So they made a smart, safe, well executed play, get first blood, and now a 3,000 gold lead. And it is so key for Fnatic that they managed to make a play on the Shin lane itself. So there's still an ulti ready for Yellowstar, which is stopping the aggression from IG. We see it here. Kitties and Kit return from lane and quickly realize our tower is gone. We're now caught in the middle and four members show up. Nothing they can do once they overextend. Poor call from IG. They get punished. And as I said, Yellowstar still has his ulti ready. Where's Ghana going to go? One unfortunate thing there for Huni is that he did not get a kill nor an assist in that, uh, despite using his teleport. Obviously, Zatai also burned teleport amongst the chaos. And if anything, I expect IG to maybe try and find their fight around the next drag. A few minutes Although away. Fnatic has so much vision control. And sight ward for both Rainover and Yellowstar doing a lot of work. Deep vision thanks to their first blood earlier. And Rainover a little bit tankier, got that giant spell completed. We did see a BF sword picked up for Kid, but Fnatic, cool, calm, and collected, slowly, you know, increasing their lead and increasing their advantage. Oh, gentlemen, Yellow Star, he fancies oh, himself, nice. and he's found Kitties, knocks him into Reckless's hands, and Feb 
Irvin will take the second kill. And this is where things just go downhill as a support. You have no flash, but you're trying to get vision control back on the map, and then you get caught out. You're dead. Your tower now is taking damage. And Fnatic wants more out of this. They're trying to just snowball this game out of control. They knew the flash was down on Kitties, so they got the repeat gank. Because they killed Kitties, they also get pink ward control inside the jungle of IG and are looking to push down that low mid lane turret. If Fnatic can get the kills, two, three outer turrets to zero, as well as a move on the second dragon, it would be huge. Well, it take a look at Hooney. He's been caught by the Crystal Arrow. Here comes Kakao. Get over here! He screams. Stand United used to keep Hooney alive. Tower is secured in the mid lane as Reckless gets that killing blow. Defense appeal from Fnatic. They're running away. That onslaught of shadows needed to get Hooney away. We do see the Sun Disc thrown down for defense and Feb will be able to get out. That was close, but they got the tower. Yeah, they got the turret. Huni was trying to make a poke play, and because they'd saved the stand, United and Huni had gone for Frozen Heart for a tankier Hecarim. He was able to escape so much burn by IG there. The Flash and the Skarner ultimate being burned in that engagement, as well as Ash Arrow really hurts IG's ability to fight back now. Three charges to zero is not something that is often recovered. I just have to really highlight how valuable this Shen pickup is for Yellowstar as a support against what IG had built. We kept highlighting how much single target CC they had to catch out one guy, and Yellowstar could stop that. And now we see once Fnatic gets onto a champion, Yellowstar is there any way to help, Huni gets out, and more important for Fnatic, all they were waiting for the last 5-6 minutes was just these outer turrets to die. They kept having to push in every single lane, once the towers went down, now we see them contest all the vision in the jungle, and soon there's no jungle left for Kakao to farm. It's going to belong to Fnatic. So Fnatic stamping authority in game one of groups at 4,000 gold lead thanks to exquisite lane pressure. 30 seconds to Dragon. Chat, you'd mentioned IG may want to fight around it, but they're quite far down if they want to think about it. Yeah, they lost their summoner flash on Kakao. Their ultimates will be back around the right time but they just strictly don't have the vision control. They have lost so much map pressure to how well Fnatic has played these lanes and how timely Fnatic's ganks have been. As soon as IG looks towards this dragon, Fnatic is hoping to get more picks and a larger snowball. Kakao needs some help. Really lucky to be getting that ward down without being punished. There's just barely any other options though for IG. Then try and go down here and try and catch out a target with Arrow and then Skarner it's, to get that one kill. Because otherwise the it's map is low. Hawk shot into Ash Arrow. But if they do Ash Arrow, the team has to be able to follow. That's a teleport. That's an arrow. The yeah, arrow. Gas going. Featherman is instantly cleansed. Dragon secured. They turn their focus to Kakao. There's the team fight. On sorts of shadows. Throws IG's backline. Zatai's forced to retreat. They've traded one for one thus far. But Reckless takes out Rook. Now they're looking for Kakin! He's Kakin! Kakin is down! Ray never gets another one! It's a three for one plus Dragon! We talked about it here for IG. They were running out of options. This was never going to be the best one, but they had to do something. We see it right here. You try and catch Febberman. He has a cleanse. Spell shield on the saver. It is impossible for Kid to find the right target. And Fnatic, they take another fight. And what's most impressive about Fnatic's 6,000 gold lead here at 19 minutes is the fact that they didn't have to take large risks in order to acquire this. They have just been playing the lane swap game extremely cleanly. They are ganking with vision control, and they are forcing IG into unfavorable, low per percentage plays. We were wondering if Fnatic would have to adopt a higher risk play style against these better teams at Worlds. So far, no. They're just playing amazing. And notice here, Febrin with the cleanse, doesn't care about the arrow, and now IG's composition, there's no real front line. Kakao is too squishy. Zitai and Kiddies are trying to be that front line for Rookie and Kid, but they die too fast and have to back out. Specifically, IG built themselves a pick composition that relies on teleport flicks. The pick didn't work because they were five-man brawling into a fight that Fnatic has set up with a zone control mage in his ear. That was almost never going to be a one fight for IG because the setup was not even close to where it needed to be. And we're not even at the point yet where Fnatic can get a QSS. And same to say also Skana ulti, we don't even care about that on our carries because right now for Fnatic, they can split up in 1-3-1 one, one setups. You normally don't want to do that again and Ash because she can just arrow out of vision, catch one guy and then break this split push. But because again, you have the saver, you have the Shen ulti, you have plans on Febivan, nothing really hurts them from what Ash can do to engage. And that is the main engage from IG other than a flash ulti from Kakao. As we've crested the 20 minute mark, Fnatic 
are quite infamous for their 20 to 25 minute Baron secures. There's already a pink ward in the pit. And we've talked about the one through one another option for Fnatic, play the Baron bait game. If any region knows how to dance around that objective, it's going to be Europe. Yeah. And look, they're, they're calling IG saying, we dare you to check. And Fnatic really is far ahead. Fnatic was praised for their ability to come back in some games. The largest Fnatic was down at 20 minutes this year in which they were able to achieve victory was 4,700 gold. They have a larger lead than that over IG right now. So the chance of comeback from IG is actually very low and either Fnatic would have to make some pretty large mistakes from here on out or IG would just have to play other world. Small window with no cleanse on February, but should be ready in just a few seconds. And then that engage option is down. Kakao has flash ready. IG needs to just pick off one target when the fight starts. And you need this Riven to be able to get into the back line and take care of Reckless or Febrin. But there's been no chance for Zitai to have an impact. Yeah, I mean, part of this goes back to Champion Select and another part goes back to the way the lane swap was played out. Kakao is not a jungler who can apply the early jungle pressure to get Riven and Edge. Hecarim then stacked armor and it's been a beautiful counterfeit from there. But now Fnatic, they're going for Baron. They are indeed. The arrow's coming out. It's connected onto Reino, but whoa, it is in whoa, fact Febbervin that secures Nash. And Victor's gonna peel away. That got close, and we did see yeah. the teleport come in as well. Really strange interaction happened right there. Febbervin actually put his Azir ultimate up against the Baron wall, and Kakao tried to flash over to steal the Baron, but specifically because the way the soldiers work, unless your entire model is over top of the Azir ultimate, he will get bounced back. So Kakao flashed in, immediately got pushed back, and could not smite. Now, we have seen IG fall behind basically from the start of the game. And that is something as a team we have seen multiple times before in the LPL. They have been so inconsistent. We just see it here again. Kakao not flashing all yeah. the way over. The way is What's won't terrifying work. is he actually got his smite off. It so was he close. did 700 it was damage, close. just Baron was at 1,000 when his smite did 700. But a zero wall is not like a normal wall here on the map where you can flash almost over it and you will move to the other side. If you don't flash fully over it, you will always get bounced back. Yep. But as we just mentioned before here, IG as a team has been so inconsistent in the LPL and they've managed to bounce back then in the next game and look fantastic. For them now, they need to figure out what can they do here. But they're so far down at 22 minutes, it should be nearly impossible for this team to come back. Gentlemen, we saw Yellowstar shoving out that bottom wave. It's a third item QSS for Febbervin. Another tower falls. And for the European team on home soil, when European squads have more than 4,000 gold lead at 20 minutes, they are 42 and 0. And it's an exceptional stat when you've generated an exceptional lead. Another tower is going to crumble under the might of Fnatic. And this is precisely what Fnatic is getting out of this Baron. They're getting the second tier turrets in almost every wave. The gold difference from before they take this Baron to when the Baron goes out is going to be massive. And when you can see the support split <laughs> pushing, <laughs> yeah, because of the Baron now. and hey, Stan United, he just wants it's to be fantastic. part of this. He I just wants to be important as well. He's getting the wave going. Hootie's coming in on the backside. These are indefensible outer turrets for IG. Yeah, and of course the right call from Fnatic. No teleport for Hootie, so you needed someone else to take in the wave with you. It is going to be Yellowstar. No ban of command yet. Slacking a little bit on that one. If it comes in later, then there's nothing IG can do to wave clear as well. The question marks around which IG would show up are coming to light. And the question marks about just how good are Fnatic on the international? How good are they after their boot camp? They're showing pretty good. It's one game, but this game isn't even close. Yeah. Like, Fnatic is absolutely demolishing IG right here. We obviously can't make any conclusions off the first game of Worlds when it's going to be a month-long tournament. Wait, Fnatic didn't win Worlds yet? Yeah, it's <laughs> over. It's congratulations. Uh, even so, the, this early game, this mid game, the way Fnatic is playing, well controlled with so much pressure in front of the home crowd, is all very good. I think we really can just praise Fnatic for the pick and ban phase. It looked a little bit worrisome on the blue side here. But they didn't really have anything where we felt they could see any of the soul lanes from IG. But just the fact they have this severe pick into the Ash that completely nullifies what Kid can do with his arrow and just push him in early. The Hecarim, the melee matchup, who can go frozen hard as well. And then Shin's support against the team yeah. that relies so much on what the top laner can do 1v1. It's just a very smart pick and ban phase for Fnatic and they're getting rewarded for it. One thing we did discuss about top lane being a more influential role and the patch in general was that it was going to be a little bit more swingy, more snowball -y because a lot of this game is about gaining a quick advantage and then trying to win within 20 minutes. Uh, in this case, Fnatic has 
accumulated an 11,000 gold lead only 25 minutes in, but that's in part because some of those matchups were so swingy. And instead of having, for IG's sake, a top lane tank to fall back on and create some stronger team fights, they've fallen behind on Riven, which is one of the most devastating things to have happen. And you're falling behind on an Ash. Your damage is not anything to write home about, and if you cannot pick off targets, your value really goes down. She's a fantastic snowball pick. Don't like it that much once she starts falling behind. But really for IG, in this situation, and what we're probably going to see for the rest of Worlds is that the current meta is very snowball focused. You can very quickly get an advantage where you take over one side of the map and you can keep forcing plays on that side. And we're gonna get these leads here. Think back to season four of Worlds with Samson White, how dominant they were when it came to vision control and simply forcing you out of your own jungle. That style has been now taken by most of the top teams and they're trying to perfect it. And we're gonna see more and more of that at Worlds itself. You can see that massive gold difference between the respective players. It is over 10,000 gold now. Another QSS was picked up on the side of Fnatic, and Baron has worn out. So Fnatic have successfully taken all outer turrets. 26 minutes into the game, and now they've shown strong early, strong mid. Fnatic need to demonstrate that cave. They can have a strong closing to the game. All summoners are up, all ultimates are up. The jungle belongs to Fnatic. This is what we talked about earlier with the lead that Fnatic have built up. Yep. Do they just play it safe and go for another Baron or maybe Aspect before looking to finish? I say uh, Fnatic is definitely going to be playing this one pretty safe. That's why they've had the luxury of building two QSSs because the last thing they want is to have a priority target pulled into an inhibitor or a Nexus turret and get quickly executed. With Baron coming up in about 90 seconds and Fnatic having complete control of the map, that's obviously the next thing they're going to be going to take. Uh, fourth Dragon would not be far behind that, but I expect Fnatic to at least try and make a play with the Baron buff. And if they get even the slightest bit dissuaded, I think they'd be going for Aspect because the overall timer on that is still pretty early in the game, and Fnatic wants to keep their options open. Just take the Baron buff, go for your 1-3-1 one, one setup again, where you have Huni sitting in one lane, let Reckless fast push another one, and then join Febriven. And you can either dive if you want to, you are strong enough, you're far enough ahead, or you can just wait for these Baron buff minions to do the work. The wave clear on the side of IG, it's mainly gonna be on Rookie, but AP champions, they hate the Baron buff because the minions no longer will just get one shot by your E if you are the victor, and they will buy time for Fnatic to just slowly but surely poke down the towers. If an engage happens, as you mentioned, yet. Double QSS is in here. Shen ulti is going to be there. Face of the mountain. There are so many ways for Fnatic to make sure a single target will not die. Yeah, right now Fnatic is kind of hoping in the back of their heads that IG is going to try and contest this Baron because it would be very nice if they could pick off multiple people in IG and then just end the game instead of waiting for these Barons. But with the 12,000 gold lead, it is within Fnatic's right to just smatter this jungle with wards. Using those sweeping lenses to clear out any vision from IG. You can see Invictus have grouped up near the north quadrant as they clear out the wave in mid. But look at Fnatic's positioning. They are tightly knit. We could be set up for a fight. That's a Sand Soldier. He's been sent forward. Huni's coming from the flank. Yeah, Huni is in potential flank position. IG is actually pretty far away. Look at Yellow Star. They do not have wards on the side. Multiple flanks. They're just bailing out of here, though. Gonna make it out. Kakao looking for more. Gonna have access to that spire just yet. Yellowstar and Rainover backs away. Gonna use the dash to dodge the death sentence. Everybody's postured very aggressively. Crystal spire secured for Kakao Skana. Where is Huni? Mid lane. Let's see if we can find a flanking opportunity. No home guards from either top lane, so we're not gonna see that insane flank coming in from Huni or Zitai. But both teams, they know this next fight will be the fight deciding the game. If IG can manage to win it, they will be able to stall the game. If Fnatic takes it, they should be able to push and open up the base completely. They're starting the Baron. No reason to risk Kakao flashing in and stealing it. Fibber yeah. needs to be on point with his ulti if they want to go for this. Somewhat of a dangerous Baron start, but here's the teleport from Huni. He has flank. He's found Zitai. The onslaught slows it down. down. Reckless has got one. Rain of a flashes over the wall. He's looking for kitties. That's a defensive flash. Emperor's divide will not pin Kakao to the wall. It's a battle on three fronts, and it's a battle that Fnatic is winning. That's a triple kill for Reckless. There's two more targets in his sight. He's looking for more. He has the tower dive. Huni is chasing Kid down. A flash away. The ricochet. It's bouncing. It's spinning. Reckless. Can he get oh, more? So the boomerang's not there. Huni and Reckless are inside.
right the base of IG. Fnatic Chase so far, and the minion wave is there. That's an inhibitor down, but they're playing the long game. They get the inhibitor and the one fight. Everything counts for Fnatic. They get the kills. They get a Zonyas as well from Febivan. Showing off a little bit. Can go back. That's a surrender wow. from IG. They know the game was over. Invictus Gaming surrender, and the hometown heroes strike first blood at the 2015 World Championships. Fnatic had a goal lead since two minutes into the game. They had a better lane swap. IG were very greedy with the way they moved his entire round. He got denied. And this conversation from Fnatic had all the answers versus the pick comp from IG. Yeah, and this is a statement game for Fnatic. They made it to five games against SK Telecom and MSI. They went undefeated in the regular season, but then they dropped two games to Origin in their finals. And a lot of people were wondering how they would be able to stand up to these expectations. Well, early read on it is very, very well. We started the spring split looking at Europe and saying, we just crashed and burned at season four Worlds. We didn't make it out of groups at all. We had a long way to become a competitive region again. Fnatic shows up with Yellowstone, four new guys. They look good in the spring split, not fantastic, but good. Win it, go to MSI, five games against MSI. We started believing this team had potential. 18-0, well, 18-0 in the summer split, to win the whole thing. And now we suddenly trust in Fnatic. We believe that Fnatic can be a team that can take at least the group. <laughs> I'm not going to go further than that. Well, the whole town and crowd here in Europe is definitely rooting for Fnatic and Jet. I distinctly remember Jat22 on Fnatic mentioning how they, in their victories, they didn't show the greatest of elation. They lost it yeah. after seeing the surrender votes. Well, specifically being in front of this crowd yeah. as well to start the World Championship against the other favorite in the group and to beat them so decisively has to be a fantastic sense of accomplishment.